Hi everyone, Gwil from Fologram here. In this tutorial, we are going to start diving into Fologram for Grasshopper, which is installed if you've already installed Fologram for Rhino. Specifically, we are going to talk about the sync geometry component, which is likely the main component that you'll use if you're using Fologram in Grasshopper. And the sync geometry component is responsible for controlling which geometry in your Grasshopper definition is sent to the HoloLens or your mobile phone or other mixed reality device. So unlike in Rhino, where everything in your model is automatically synchronized with what you see in AR, or anything visible at least in Rhino will automatically be synced, in Grasshopper you tend to have a lot of construction geometry. So you might have some points which get moved and then you have some lines generated from the points and those lines might be lofted. You might want to see the loft, but not see all of that other geometry in your model. And so in Grasshopper, we allow you to explicitly control what gets sent over to the mixed reality, dev to the mixed reality device um, using this sync geometry component. Let's show full name so you can see what it does. So the sync geometry component lives in the Fologram toolbar in the sync menu, sync geometry. It's got a bunch of inputs here and we'll just go through these one by one and we might make some geometry while we're at it. So I am just going to make a mesh sphere. Plug that into our geometry. Let's make the radius a bit bigger. So we can see it. Okay, cool. We've got one here. Um, so the geometry input is going to be the obviously the geometry that you want to actually send over uh, to AR. Now, whenever this geometry changes, so if we change the radius of our sphere, this um, uh, geometry here is going to be re resent to all connected devices. So you do want to be a little bit careful because it's very easy to drag a slider in Grasshopper and make you know dozens of changes uh, to your model. You want to be a little bit careful that the uh, geometry that you connect to the sync geometry component isn't really heavy and dense, doesn't contain lots and lots of faces. You can do that by hovering over any mesh input in Grasshopper. It's going to tell you the um, vertices and faces uh, of that object. So in this case, our sphere is 182 vertices, 200 faces. That's going to be fine. That's going to synchronize pretty much instantly um, as we change this slider. But if we were sending over something which was much more dense, let's say we had more faces in the sphere. So now we're up to 500 faces. Let's increase this some more. Now we're up to 4,000 faces. As we're making changes to this sphere, potentially we're um, sending thousands and thousands or hundreds of thousands of faces over to our mixed reality device. That's going to consume some network bandwidth and it's also going to take longer to render on the device. So if you're finding that you're making a change in your Grasshopper model and you're not seeing that change update immediately uh, on your phone or other device, that could be why. So let's just uh, connect up Fologram now. And we'll see if we can demonstrate that for you. Wait until we detect this code. Let's place the model there, that'll be fine. All right, there's our sphere. And let's see what happens when I drag this slider. You can see there's a little bit of a delay between um, the sphere updating Let's make the sphere even bigger. So now we've got a 10,000 face sphere. Now it's much more noticeable that delay. So the more geometry that's being sent by the sync geometry component, um, the more of a delay we'll potentially uh, experience. And in that case, we've even dropped out there. Let's just reconnect. So try to um, just be aware, if you're going to change uh, geometry dynamically, be aware of how much information is being synchronized. So I'm going to set this back to a much more reasonable number of faces. Got a nice simple sphere. Okay, then we have a material input 
or swatch. So if we create a swatch, a color swatch, plug that in here, it's by default just going to create a diffuse material um, with that diffuse color. You can also use the um, material component in Grasshopper, create material, if you want to have more control over those um, different material parameters. Then we have the same properties as we have in Rhino. So whether or not the object should be interactive what it's dis and what its display mode should be. We can create these uh, drop downs for the interaction types and the display modes using these um, pre-built type drop downs in the Fologram menu. So we can make this object selectable, which just means that we're going to be able to detect taps on that object. If we wanted to turn it into a button, we can make it movable, which will mean that we'll be able to move this object. Um, I can't at the moment because I'm streaming this through the virtual desktop, um, but that will make it movable. And we can change the display mode. So just like we saw before, we can switch between shaded, wireframe, rendered wireframe, etc. Um, we didn't see wireframe just because those edges were not welded. Rendered silhouette hopefully will display our white outline as expected. So we can control those things just like we could from Rhino. Um, these are parametric. So the other way that these will work is we can provide uh, just normal uh, text input to these um, display mode or interaction parameters and then we have a little bit more control over them. And we'll talk about that more when we go into synchronizing parameters with our mixed reality UI and Fologram, this um, menu here. Okay, there's two other aspects um, of the sync geometry component which are different to Rhino. So those are the transform input and the parent input. Now, when you change the mesh input uh, to the sync geometry component. So let's say we want to move this sphere by some amount. Let's make a unit vector and let's be able to move it up by 125 millimeters. So I've moved that now in Grasshopper. And I'll plug it in here. And then as we change this slider, we're going to see that sphere move up and down. Now, what is happening here is we're sending over a completely new sphere geometry. All of those vertices and faces every time we change this slider. And that's because Grasshopper is generating a new sphere by moving this old sphere. There's, as you can see, there's two spheres here in our Grasshopper preview, the old one and the new moved one. So we're creating a new piece of geometry and then our sync geometry component is sending that over to our mixed reality de device. So if we had a really dense mesh with thousands and thousands of faces, and a good uh, example of this is when you're, say, doing a preview of a like robotic arm or something like that in Grasshopper, it's not very efficient to resend all of the geometry when part of that arm is moving, or when, in this case, when our sphere is moving up and down. It's much more efficient to instead be able to send only the transform, which is a matrix which tells... Um, Fologram exactly how to move that object which has already been synchronized with your mixed reality device. That's far less data to send and it's much more efficient. So instead let's sync the old sphere again before we moved it and rather than using the move geometry we can instead use the move transform and plug it in here and watch what that does. We get two effects from that. First of all, the change is pretty much instant because sending a transform is just sending 16 numbers, a small matrix, 4x4 four four matrix. And because we're sending a transform, Fologram can animate and interpolate between the old position and the new position. So this lets us create some really, really nice um, uh, animated transforms. The last input to the sync geometry component is a parent input. So what this lets us do is essentially stack transforms. So if I wanted to say cover this sphere in a whole lot of other little small spheres, I could parent all those small spheres to um, this sphere that we have here. 
And then whenever the parent moves, all of the small spheres will also move. I think we'll probably leave um, that for a tutorial on advanced UI later because it's particularly useful for doing things like creating slates that you can grab and move around and on each slate is a collection of buttons or other UI elements. All right, so that is the um, sync geometry component showing you what those different inputs and outputs do. One note on the output before we end the video is um, the output type here is a special phologram type. It's called a synchronized mesh type, or if we sync some other kind of geometry, um, like a curve, for instance, it'd be a synchronized curve type. You can always convert that back to a mesh if you want to, just by forcing it into a mesh parameter. So that's going to give you back that mesh object, and then you can do stuff with it in the rest of your grasshopper definition. That's it's pretty useful casting back to mesh types if you have interactivity turned on. So for instance, we might want to be able to move this sphere around in mixed reality and then do something with the moved mesh later on. So that's what casting will do. We can cast it back to the original geometry type to get the geometry of this moved object. Okay, in the next video, we're going to look at synchronizing parameters and get stuck into some UI.